and welcome to the Pirate Fan Club podcast, where I talk about pirate history, pirate culture, and I get to talk to some people in the pirate subculture sometimes. And that's what we're going to be doing today. But before I introduce our guest, I just want to give a blurb about Pirates of the Wild West, the book that I wrote about pirates. I just launched the hardback version of it. You can find it on Amazon and you can uh, check it out. If you have any questions about that, you can email me at darkgravitystudios at gmail.com. You can also go to the Pirate Fan Club website where you can find all kinds of pirate information, news, and happenings. So today, let's welcome Eric Von Hunter. I met him at one of the pirate events, uh, Ren Faire Festival, actually, and um, I've had the pleasure of seeing him a couple of times at these events, and he's a fantastic guy, and this guy is full-on pirate. Eric, say hi. How's it going? Um, so Eric Von Hunter is my name, but, you know, uh, my pirate name is uh, Captain Iron Crow. Captain Iron Crow. I love it. How did that come about? So I was trying to think of a, you know, a catchy name. That's and catchy. sometimes the pirates, you know, it's kind of like obvious, you know, like Blackbeard or what have you, you know? Yeah. And um, I designed my hat that I made because I couldn't really find one. And I got a crow's skull on top. Yeah. And I got a little piece of iron going through. So I was thinking maybe something like crowbar or something, you know, but I was like, that's <laughs> a little too modern. Right. So I looked at the etymology of the um, of crowbar, and it turns out back even in the 1700s they were a tool, but it was called an iron crow. Oh no way! Yeah. Huh. So that's how it kind of developed. It's so fitting. That is awesome. So when did you when did you um, pull that name out? When did you cr crescent that name for yourself? Crescent. I crescent it probably before um, the pirate invasion of Long Beach. Where we had our encampment, the Kraken Barrel. Oh, nice. Yeah, we just kind of, I was just like, I got to have a name. I got to tell people <laughs> something other than Eric Von Hunter. No, I love it. Priority. I love it. That's fantastic. Um, so I've been watching from the sidelines the pirate subculture. I'm going to call it a subculture. I just keep continuing to do that. It's what it seems like it is to me. And maybe it's reenactors, maybe it's just enthusiasts. But it really, to me, seems like there is groups within groups, and there are. Um, I mean, it's it's it. People take this pirate life seriously. Not like they're going out and um, plundering uh, ships <laughs> and things like that or raiding towns. We talk about it, but we really don't. We talk, yeah, of course. I get you. Um, most of the time, from what I've learned and discovered, is that. Um, there's, there is a key to like living that life of freedom and things like that, that goes deep within the subculture, but it's also about spinning that around and giving back to community, helping other people. It's very charitable is what I found from all the different crews and groups, as well as the people involved in it. Just yeah. some fantastic people. You're, you're, it, and you're no exception. I, and that's why I was really excited to talk to you. Not only is your, your, um, outward physical appearance and costume just so spot on and rad. I know that's not a pirate term, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but uh, that's a okay. skater from the eighties going, yeah, this, this guy's rad. I have to, I have to really talk to him. And I'm so happy that you came on to get interviewed. Yeah. It's like, I, I love the whole pirate subculture. It's like, it's, you know, about freedom. It's about having fun. Don't, you know, you just don't care about what people think, like walking down the street in a pirate outfit, you know, makes people wonder what's wrong with this guy and just i'm having fun i haven't living my best life you know i don't i don't think they think what's wrong with them i think they want to know what is going on with him yeah. <laughs> i love it i mean it, it, it's interesting like the first pirate innovation that i went to that i was actually dressed up um you know here in long beach i live in long beach so you know local event um i was walking down the street and this um patron was like at a restaurant on the outdoor patio and he's all like, you can't be carrying around that sword. It's illegal. Well, it's not. It's open carry and it's sheathed. So in California, it's legal. All right. And I'm like, oh, that's not what your wife said last night. Ah. And he just like, kind of looked at me and I'm like, pirate. Yeah. It just goes but along with the territory. Down. You can get away with it. Yeah. And you've got a sword to back it up. 
I actually switched to an axe recently because that sword, it gets so heavy walking around at fair all the time. So I just went and for an axe. An axe is lightweight? Come on. Light is that right? Small handle and <laughs> not everybody does an axe, you know? <laughs> well, I don't know. You're hacking and slashing. doesn't matter how that, uh, how, how it works as long as you get the oh, job done. Get done. Yeah. And there's a lot of, um, like charity as well, you know? Yeah. Um, my crew, we're, um, the crack and barrel tavern is the name that we're going by. Okay. Um, right now we're in our infancy. We just finished up pirate invasion long beach and you know, it seems like we're a hit amongst the commu- pirate community. Fantastic. We didn't get that much play traffic, but that's okay because it was our first time kind of wanted to ease our way into it, but we had oceanfront property. It was cool all day, but um, back to the point, the charity, like now that we're, I got a good crew growing. We need to start, we're actually going to start discussing charity. Like who right. should we give to? Why do we want to give to them? You know, the appropriate means, you know, because you've been involved with other crews though. You've been, okay. So let me let's just back this up and let me get a little bit of history from you. So when did you, when did you first start into the subculture of pirates? Like how long ago before you started dressing up? You said it was your first time was at Long Beach at the Pirate Invasion, yeah. right? But how so long ago was that? My first time was um, 2017. Oh, so I you've been doing it for a while. Uh, oh, yeah. It was an Instagram page called um, Reasons to Love Long Beach, which isn't around no more, unfortunately. But um, they sent me there to shoot some reels, you know, get some video footage, get some, take some pictures of pirates. I'm like, okay, oh. No problem. So, you know, brought my gear along with me and just started talking to the pirates, snapping pictures, and really started to get to know them. Like, um, pirates just handing out rum. Just, you know, I'm not going to pirate and giving me rum. Like, this is fucking awesome. Right. And there there was a, um, a crew there. Uh, they're no longer at Invasion. Don't know why, but um, they were called the Booty Lounge. <laughs> like, and they were like, like party it seemed like a party atmosphere just like fun to be around yeah yeah pull me in give me a little demonstration showing how they're like flogging people pouring water over people embarrassing them but okay just being pirates you know all right and i got bit with the bug i was like okay next year i I gotta go like i gotta get dressed up yeah so um i didn't know where to start because i wasn't going into rent fair so i didn't know really know that's where i get all my gear okay so i was able to procure like a sword i went to the goodwill and got some pants and tore them up got like a shirt and stained it up a little bit you know got yeah. a hat and you know it was very 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 pirate light okay but went there you know had a great time bought some jewelry for my fingers which i forgot but <laughs> <laughs> that's even here or there but yeah it was just after i went there then that was 2019 so then but, you, you, but you've been members of other crews, right? Uh, I've been with one other crew. Um, gotcha. Okay. Port Royal Privateers. I was with them last year at Pirate Invasion. Okay. So, what, was, so what's uh, their charity mantra or, or uh, thing that they do? Uh, I, I can't remember because I was, I was, just, I was with them for a couple months. Oh, like gotcha. they, yeah. Like we had meetings planned, but the meetings would fall through and, you know, yeah. So I never got like the full experience with them. You got to wrangle these pirates, man. They're, they, you know, they're out drinking. They're joining other crews. They're sailing around. It's hard to get them all together for a meeting. Oh, you're telling me. It's, <laughs> it's hard enough. Pirates are even harder. Okay, okay. So where did your love of pirates come from? Did you have it as a kid or was that just that event that you went to sparked it? I, I got to say, even as a kid, um, I would watch um, with the princess and the pirate, Bob Hope, with my grandparents, you know? Oh, wow. You're going way back there, man. Yeah. I mean, got to go to classics. Yeah. And, and it, 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 you know, as a though, I rewatched it. I'm like, I was tripping out how much Pirates of the Caribbean took from, yeah. From the movie mm-hmm. to the ride. Yeah. So that was, you know, I thought, I thought that was pretty awesome realizing that as an adult. And, you know, who doesn't love Pirates of the Caribbean? It isn't. Yeah. Um, but other movies, you know, Goonies, another movie. Right. Yeah, One eyed Willie. Finding the shipwreck and you know. Um since that was mentioned. magical. Um Princess Bride, mm-hmm. the Great Friar, you know, Great Fire Roberts, I believe yeah. it was. And you know, all the venturing and going out and having fun. You know, like I was a nerd before I knew I was 
I was a nerd before I even knew what a nerd was, you know? Yeah. Fantasy, you know. And um I'm trying to think there was one other movie. Oh, Yellowbeard. I don't think I've seen Yellowbeard. Uh, is it good? Cheech and Chung. Oh, yes. is that what that is? <laughs> so there's, you know, topless women running around. There's uh, a pirate, you know. Okay. It's, it's, it's <laughs> one of those stoner movies, but it's great. Yellow uh, Bear. I'm going to have to look that up. I think it's streaming somewhere. I think it's I streaming bet. somewhere. I would imagine um, so. Somewhere. And of course, you know, the original Pirates of the Caribbean, you know, this yeah. is the Black Bear. Yeah. I mean, once you saw that, I'm like, oh, this is this is nice, you know? Yeah. I, uh, and that was for me too, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean and for, as a kid. Um, you know, there was a, a lot of movies as well. Like most of them I remember were black and white when I was a little kid. Cause I'm old, I guess now. And, <laughs> uh, there was, uh, I remember this one, it was, maybe it was the ghost of Blackbeard or something. That one just sticks out. Whoever that guy was that played Blackbeard, who didn't seem to be now that I have done like more research, wasn't historically looking like Blackbeard at that time. Yeah. But, that the the characterization of him was burnt into my mind as a young boy and uh i was i was born in miami and my parents would ship me and my siblings to miami during uh the summers after we had moved away and for whatever reason it was uh, there was just so much pirate culture already there yeah. Oh, Florida and, like- and Disney World at that time. I mean, going to Pirates of the Caribbean was just like you know mind blowing, world changing, and uh, having one of those wooden um, flintlocks that they used to sell back in the seventies yeah. was phenomenal. It was great. Yeah, and it's a shame you can't get those now. You know. Yeah. Even not they like they're all painted like green or you know yeah. some vivid cover, so you, you won't get mistaken as a gun. Yeah, yeah. So do you okay? Let me just I've looked on Etsy for those types of things and I haven't pulled the trigger. I guess that's literally and figuratively, right? What what kind of uh armament do you have besides the sword and the axe? Do you have a flintlock? I got I got I got two two pistols. I picked them up from um the Irwindale swap me. He have a vendor there, he actually sells like all the pistols, they got different types and oh the swap me, not a ren fair. Yeah, at a ring fair. Oh, oh at a ring fair. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. So, this one right here. That's a beauty. Like a, a really wide barrel. Yeah, kind of light, you know. Yeah. Kind of clicks, which is nice. Um, the other one, I got a, it's on my side. I don't knock everything else over. <laughs> you know, it's similar size, but the yeah. thing I like about it is the, the butt. Okay, so, yeah. So, so for audio, it's got like a uh, a metal, um, just like something you would knock somebody over the head with. That's at the end. Exactly. Of the you know, if you only got that. Sorry, you only got that one shot. So you. Yeah. <laughs> it takes you a long time to load those things. So you went to uh, melee combat really quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, um, at the same vendor that where I got these pistols, I wish I could remember the name, but yeah. I don't. Uh, I apologize. Um, they also have like a a pistol slash boarding axe. So instead of like having that metal piece right here, it's a full on axe. Yeah. So you can use your gun as a as an axe. So it had a blade at the end. That's uh, yeah, that's some serious business. That uh, like, you know, I, I'm not heavy into the armament. Like I can't tell you what kind of pistols they are. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's talk about like historical pirates. Like, is do you have a favorite? actual real pirate that existed in history that uh, you could call your favorite um i i know it's um typical but yeah Ed, i love Ed, i love edward teach you know blackbeard, blackbeard. yeah no uh, for me as well like i yeah i i know everybody like we like oh of course blackbeard oh uh, the guy the uh, the the myth the legend of that person is just it's amazing. It's pirate. It's to the core. It's like what I love about him was his theatrics. Like, yeah, he put on a show mm-hmm. to terrify his victims. Right. And I don't know if everybody knows this, but you know, he wasn't a really violent pirate. Like, he didn't he didn't want to fire his guns unless he had to. Right. So a lot of shit that he took, he took without firing a shot, just because of the myth that he there- presented to himself. 
there is a lot of um there's okay so there's all of these accounts that are secondhand of him and most of it is that we have on record were like reports of afterwards that you know that that he had taken a ship and what did he what he had um as far as like armament on his ship how many crew members and what they took but there's no record of him killing anyone no there's no record of him at all killing people he did get into that last battle um with um with the guy who who ended up taking his head but yeah. it, there's no actual um record of him even killing one of the crew members at that point in time sure they shot cannons and of course that did the damage but yeah. not him personally, not him personally. Yeah. and um and I find that a little bit interesting because I think the theatrics, like you said, is exactly what he used. I think he was very smart in knowing that it's much better to take a ship without firing a shot because yeah. it's really hard to get the treasure off the bottom of the sea if you end up doing too much damage. So we had, we had like a little running joke about that. Like, yeah, he didn't want to shoot any guns off. He wanted to take that ship. Oh, because little known fact, he was actually a um, boat salesman. So... You pirate the ship. You don't want to sink it because you can get some money off of it. So throw in a quick coat of paint and resell it. And yeah, there you go. Right. No. Yeah. It's a, yeah. It's just a, like a hijacker almost, not a, a murderous yeah. villain. But he he loved that. Rep I mean, obviously, he loved that reputation because it got him what he needed and wanted. Yeah. Right. He relished it. I love that. Um, and, and there are other pirates during that time frame where there is actual evidence and um and documentation of them torturing people of them killing people putting them you know uh yeah, is, see, you know sinking them people. yeah but not blackbeard no. um so then what would be your favorite fictional pirate is it My yellow beard from cheech and chong is um i gotta say um barbosa from hector barbosa from parts of the caribbean that's amazing yeah i love his story arc i love his how that uh, was a Jeffrey Rush, how he perfected that pirate voice. Like it gave it, it breathed fresh air into it where it wasn't as cheesy as the Treasure Island, you know. Yeah. Like, you know, like shiver me timbers, you know, all of that stuff. Like he took it, but he embellished it where it was a whole lot more believable. And, you know, he likes the peacock. He's got the big hat. He's got the big feather. Yeah. He's got a flair about himself. And his whole story arc to the last one i know the last Pirates of the caribbean isn't popular with everybody but how he met his daughter and gave his life to save his daughter's life his one treasure yeah he had that uh, uh somebody else had, on this podcast had mentioned that you know he had a full arc in his storyline yeah uh, through those movies and uh yeah definitely an interesting portrayal and you're right jeffrey rush just really crushed it's, that role especially because it was like he was the villain yeah. He was the villain the entire movie. But then when he shows up at the end of um uh the second parts of the Caribbean, like at, towards the end credits, and it aired the whole audience just like applauded because he was so excited, you know. Yeah. Like, oh he's back. He's back. And now you're rooting for him because I need him. Yeah. Well he and he was uh a, a, they wrote him as a very well rounded character you know yeah. like we understood what his motivations were and what he was trying to accomplish and why he did what he did amazing it was good yeah great character um all right all right uh iron years yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right what um would your if you were gonna actually plunder a ship and take it for your own your flagship of your fleet what would you name it? I, I had to give this one some thought. Yeah. Because I've seen it and I was like, I got to think about it. But sometimes overthinking, you don't produce results. And I just went with the first thing that came to my mind. And it was the arrogance. The arrogance. Oh, my God. That's really good. You know, I like that. It's not It's not violent. You know? No. It's not scary. But it has that ring of authority and like you say arrogance but uh yeah it's arrogance like i'm a pirate you know yeah i think i have the best shit out there right i'm gonna do what i need to do yeah <laughs> which is funny because that's completely not my character at all you know i'm a cool laid-back kind of guy but yeah 
I don't know. Arrogance. It fits me right now. I think I think it's a great name. Well done, Iron Crow. It's excellent. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, do you have uh since you've been on this path and um been knee deep in the pirate world, do you did you end up getting like more historical pirate knowledge that it would it like speak to you like, oh, I want to really know history and and um what really happened during those time frames? I, I, I try to delve into it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you're watching documentaries and there's a lot to take in. Like yeah. I'm not always the best with dates, you know. In fact, yeah, yeah, you no, know, it's not a, I get you. It, it's one of those things like if you ask me a certain question, I might be able to answer it. <laughs> yeah. I'm not I'm not like a like a true history. I know there's some pirates out there that like could tell yeah. you anything about everybody, you know. Um, but uh, like say like you know, like pirate seek or something like that. It's not really pirate, you know, but it has to do with um Disneyland and Pirates of the Caribbean back when they're developing it. Yeah. Um they want one of one of the story plots that they were tinkering around with was having the ghost of Blackbeard in the haunted mansion and tying the haunted mansion into the Pirates of the Caribbean because they're right next to each other. Yeah. And there was a whole story involving the um Tom Sawyer Island was like a there's like a pirate cove over there and there was like a tunnel that actually led from the island yeah down to the square and i love that you up. brought that up i i heard that too i remember going to tom sawyer island and there was all kinds of it felt very piratish to me as well yeah. right yeah it, it totally does and i think they even call it like a pirate's cove or something you know someplace mm-hmm. on the island mm-hmm. but yeah just the whole like crossing you know combining the rides together and yeah. Having a tunnel that ties everything else together, like it would have been cool to see them actually do that. Oh, that's amazing. Did you end up watching um, Black Sails? Oh, yeah, I loved it. Yeah, it was, you I know, started watching it again. It's it was so good, it really was. Like, yeah, I didn't, it didn't go the way you know, like it didn't go the way I think it was going to go. How they're tying fictional and yeah, you know, Long John Silver into pirate the real pirates and, and of history. And, yeah, like I like how the the outfits weren't so you know gaudy like mine <laughs> right it, 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 you know, it was a bit more rat you know more it seemed more of a real realistic instead of like a fantasy pirate which i kind of like he was a little gritty okay so um i haven't looked into this very much but you're right if you go to the pirate uh, invasion of long beach or you go to any pirate festival you're going to see pirates mostly dressed in very ornate very, I would say, gaudy type of coats and wear, yeah. right? And um, I'm going to lean on the side of there were pirates that dressed like that because they were plundering at some points in time, rich that, merchants, and they would take I their would, outfits, I right? Like you know, like my jacket was like, oh, it was um, it was like Queen Anne's curtains, you know, whatever, you know, just yeah, I got okay. the curtains and I got it turned into a coat. That's what it looks like. Yeah, somebody said I look like a couch. <laughs> <laughs> so for audio, it's you know a very crimson red with gold like um, leaf looking uh, decorations on it. Yeah, like and, little you know, green really. Green. I don't know what the buttons are, but they're really spectacular. And then like a kind of a floral blackness to it um, yeah. on the edges. It's a beautiful coat. I think I've I've seen that one in person. It's really yeah. That nice the first, I think the, I met you the first time I wore this coat. Yeah. Okay. Around there, like the first time I went to Escondido, and I ran into you. But that's what pirates. I mean, and you were talking about your rings. Pirates would wear all of the jewelry. You you couldn't trust your own no. crew members to not go into your stuff. So you would wear everything that you owned on your body, and all of your precious stuff was remaining with you. I would imagine not when you're working the sale. Well, I don't know. I'm, just speculating when you're working the sails and the rigging, you probably wouldn't be wearing that coat. It probably wouldn't no. work real well. well like, like even like the only person I think would wear shoes was the um, captain, but okay. everybody else, like crew, they got to have their barefoot. Barefoot. They got to cl- climb on the rigging and everything. Yeah. So you, you know, it's a lot easier. Yeah, no doubt. Um, but yeah, when you when you're uh, accumulating all of these um, outfits, um, are you are you so like at the Pirate Invasion of Long Beach, two days or other Ren Faire festivals or multiple days. Are you changing your outfit? Is that what your um, your yeah. goal is to kind of have more outfits so you could be a different one a, each day? I had a four or five different outfits lined up just in case. Yeah, Like in okay. the morning, I start with a bigger coat, you know, because it's not too hot. 
Mm-hmm. Then it starts to get hot. So I was like, okay, I can change into this vest instead of this coat. Or maybe I'll go as a crew and just take off all my coats and just like walk around with a raggedy shirt and raggedy, you know. I probably could have got like eight or nine outfits easily what I brought to Empire Pirate Invasion. I got you. Okay. So tell us about the pirate invasion. This just happened in Long Beach um, over the last weekend of um, June. Sorry. And um, it was two days. It's in a beautiful location. I didn't go this year, but I've been a few years um, running. And um, tell us, how did it go? Was it a bigger uh, crowd? Was it more people? What was going on? It was a nice turnout. So, um, like I said, um, when I started doing the whole pirate thing, one of my goals was I want to get in with the crew so I can go to pirate invasion and be part of it. Yeah. And, um, you know, tries and I, there wasn't a lot of pirate crews I knew that were based out of Long Beach. Okay. And it was during COVID too. So we couldn't really go out and meet people. We were yeah. all you know, locked in. And so what I started to do with me, my um, quartermaster and my bosun, we would, um, I had a couple, you know, a couple of pop-ups already. So we would, Say we're having a pirate day at the beach and you know try to invite friends you know just go pirate like just hang out at the beach all day dressed as pirates just because why not and did this for a few years and i finally got up the nerve to um talk to captain morgan and seeing about getting my crew into pirate invasion and an encampment uh, and, uh, captain morgan runs it right yeah he's a big figure has big red coat he's always got the pirate parrot and everything Oh, so, yeah, yeah. The past three months I've been setting up, like going thrifting, the thrift stores, like six or seven thrift stores every weekend, just like trying to look for little nooks and crannies, you know, like little things I can decorate with, you know, like stuff like I have right here beside me. And um, we got there Thursday for early setup. We got to build up all the major structures and all that. Yeah. And then Friday, the rest of our crew came in and they kind of, Decorate it, the crew tremonts. And I heard, I heard one of the comments from our encampment, the Kraken Barrel Tavern, was um, it looked like we stopped by Disneyland on the way to Pirate Invasion. Oh, yeah. You just had to decorate, to... decorate our encampment. Nice. Um, That's a compliment yeah, so... because all your stuff is really rad. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like so... props from Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> it looks like it. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I didn't feel like carrying my sword around, so I ended up stabbing a plastic skull I borrowed from another pirate <laughs> in the back and just leaving it there. Oh, that's and, awesome. Um, I traded a jacket for a a big hat pirate hat. I'm sure you've seen them. They're guys with the really big hats. Yeah. But I haven't had a chance to wear it. I don't, I'm still working on it. Okay. And so I just decorated my together. skeleton on my display out in the open. And, you know, I, or people are like, you're just going to leave that there? I'm like, it's decoration. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but Saturday came came along and it was fun, you know, pirates hanging out, drinking rum, yeah, having a good time, mm-hmm. meeting new friends, seeing a lot of pirates that you admire online and actually get to talk to them, you know, not just like, oh, message, oh, I think you look cool. Yeah, you get yeah. To see them, you get to see their personalities and, like, I made so many good friends. Um one of the friends I made was um he goes by Squid Vicious. He's out of New Orleans. Squid. Oh, really? He came a long and way. Then, uh, like I met him, he was just so genuine. Like oh, this yeah. guy's cool, you know. One of yeah. those guys I looked up to, and and he just like cool as hell. So no, that's rad. And you know, it's nice to see this, you know sunrise because you're up early because okay it's, we're at the port, you know, so it's noisy. Yeah. Uh, walk around all day lounge around like i said we had the pike and kraken tavern and our main thing my our theme is um hospitality okay. like you're walking around all day in the sun you want to get out of the sun for a bit you want to sit a little bit so we had like a little lounge area kind of like a hookah lounge you know oh I yeah got pillows and cushions all the way around so you just go in there and plop down and just relax out of the sun with a nice ocean breeze and luckily we had um, musicians coming in and out all day like, yeah, had like many jam sessions. They just oh, that's added great. To the atmosphere. It's and then Sunny came around so fast. Did Sunday it? went so fast. Yeah, about five or six, and I think it went until seven or eight. But around like six o'clock, it really hit me. Like, oh my god, I pulled this off. 
Yeah. Like, you you amazing, did it. Off. Everybody likes it. Yeah. I met so many friends and it's like, oh, it's over. <laughs> I'm not going to see these people for a while. Right. And, it, you know, it was, like, it was like accomplishment and heartbreak and everything all at once were just like so overwhelming. Like, I, I, I was on the verge of tears. I had to you know, like seek out, you know, friends for comfort just kind of like. Oh, yeah. Because you know, it was just so intense, but. It was such a great experience. I, I you know, I love invading so much. That's um, so great, man. It's like a like, heart, so heartfelt, you know, like it really yeah. is becomes like this great community that rallies yeah, around you I, and you can rally like, around them. I joined this community because it, everybody's so nice, you know, yeah. so genuine. Yeah. Um, Sunday night, we had to start breaking down, you know, you got to be out there by Monday. Um, I was sitting there with my quartermaster. That's, yeah. He's the one that's been there with me since like day one, you know, like, he was down to do all this pirate stuff when I started wanting to do the account. He's like, yeah, let's do this. Um, we're just sitting there overlooking, looking at the Queen Mary. We had just enough rum in the bottle for two shots. So <laughs> okay. We poured, we poured shots. And I know it's typical. It's cheesy. I loved it. Um, we, um, we cheered from the Pirates of the Caribbean, you know, um, take what you can. And he replied, give nothing back. Just like, then we cheered. Yeah. And we went to bed. And I was like, that was just like the cherry on top of that fucking weekend. That's like, amazing. Dude, great. I love it. I'm so glad that it worked out great for you. And I can't wait to see you again. What's the next one you're going to go to? Oh. Okay, so where would I like to go, or where I'm going to be this year? Um, there's a um, Victorian like a day event over in Santa Ana on Saturday, so I'm probably going to be out there. Uh, oh, you're doing it this Saturday? Before. Yeah, this Saturday. Um, okay. I don't know if that's going to be in time or not. <laughs> right, like like uh, July twelfth or thirteenth. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know if it'll be out in time, but you can edit that out if. Not possible. <laughs> um, okay, so there's that. Um, give me one second. So there's the um, Vista Viking Festival down in Vista, California. Kind yeah. of, you know. And um, I'm going to be dressing up as a Viking, obviously, but Vikings are pirate, basically pirates, anyway. So they kind of were, weren't they? Yeah, they were, they were pirates, they but they were also they, they were pirates of a country. Yeah. So. That's all that, and they always have all that meat out there, which is, you know, a great drink on its own. Oh, um, I thought you said great meat. Is it mead? You just said, yeah, mead. 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 Oh, yeah. Uh, but, I've never um, had mead. Is it? Uh, what is it like? Is it like it, a heavy type type of beer? It's heavy and it's sweet. It's kind of like it's made from um, fermented honey. Oh no way! So there's some really. I mean, I like my drinks on the sweet side. I hate yeah. to say, it, but. Um, they, I when I went, we went last year. They had a boysenberry pie, mead. Really, which was like just for that event, basically. And is there had, a like, high al? Al- is there a high um, alcohol content in mead? Some of them do. I, don't oh, know, I think okay. they're probably ten percent or something like that. But for a small drink, you know, it's gonna that's that's gotcha. good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, after Vista, there's also Idlewild is going to be going on in September as well. So we're going to try to make it out there. Okay. Going to get crew members out to go with me, mm-hmm. walk around, say hi to everybody. Um, then I think um, November is the um, is the uh, Escondido Ren Festival. Yeah, the last weekend of October and first week of November is um, Escondido. So yeah. definitely going to be there. I'm actually be with a separate crew, the um, Pirates of Treasure Cove. Isn't that who you're with? Yeah, Pirates of Treasure Cove. Cove. I got invited to the um, play with them at Esco. So. Yeah. I'll be out there at that encampment. And then um in December, I know there's another um there's a Yule festival down in Vista. A Yule festival. I yeah, like kind of Christmas, yeah, you know, like December, which yeah. is gonna be nice and wear our furs without <laughs> don't have to worry about overheating. Okay. Um, yeah, so kind of like um, you know, like a Viking Nordic 
Christmas festival. Interesting. But, you know, that's that's kind of cool. Because, you know, Yule was, Christmas was derived from Yule, you know. It got okay. stolen from the pagans and yeah. converted over to a religious holiday, basically. Nice. So that's here and there. But that's a whole other You've got something also. every single month almost. And uh, it's going to, it's great because it sounds like a lot of your same friends and crew are going to be going to it with you. So you have yeah. your kind of like, I'm going to go back to the subculture thing. You have your subculture that is like, going to support you and you get to have fun with them. You get to hang out with them. And, um, you know, I, I'm not reducing it down to playing dress up, but you get to wear your, your gear and the stuff that you're passionate about. I think yeah. It's awesome. And it, you know, it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like peacocking, you know, you want to show off a little bit. You got that yeah. new little accessory that you didn't have before that just kind of ties the whole outfit together. Right. Like, like for, for me, like, I've all you've seen the evolution, my evolution pictures. Yeah. Like this look didn't come till this year. Like one time I was like, well, I've been growing out my hair for the Viking thing. I was like, let me put the hair down. And once I put the hair down with the hat, yeah, the whole look just kind of just came together. It came together. It was the look I've been looking for for years, but you know, I and I really imagine getting your outfits slowly over time, you know, one festival at a time or one thrift store, wherever you find it is probably more yeah. gratifying than if you were like going on to Amazon and just buying everything. It really is. Like, yeah. you know, it's nice to go hunt for that one piece. You go check yeah. out all the vendors, maybe they have satisfaction in that. Before, and, you know, just tying it all together. Cause then if you like to dress up, you have more than one costume or outfit. So you, when you're buying stuff, you also like, can I use this on another outfit? You know, kind of, Oh yeah. Match it. And get different looks going on, but you don't have to, you know, buy so much. Yeah, I like I'm more. I, I I call myself like a thrifty pirate. I don't really like got the money to be dropping hundreds of dollars for a jacket or hundreds of dollars for a hat. Right. It's just kind of like I do with what I can with what I got, you know, and make it work. Like a real friggin' pirate. Yeah. yeah. You get you use what you come across. That's why I like and I, and just you know I love thrifting obviously. Yeah. And to me, that's like my treasure hunt you know it is a treasure so, hunt. you're seeing that one piece and you're like i gotta go get the shopping cart to, like, <laughs> carry it around <laughs> and i hope it's there when i get back no kidding yeah yeah all right so uh so you got any big plans for um the crew yeah like, yeah like future um, plans well we we're um we actually we got to expand going after going to invasion i was able to upgrade um press some people into service basically oh so, I got about 10 members currently, including myself. Mm -hmm. um, I got my quartermaster. He goes by Craven More Winches. Craven yeah, More, more Winches. winches. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and he's like, he's been there from the beginning. He's my ride or die. Like, he, mm -hmm. he's always there when I need him. Yeah. He always comes through. Um, then I got my bosun. Um, he goes by Dusty June. She's responsible for the look of the encampment. Like, I had the vision... I bought the stuff. She was able to place it all around and just make it pop the way it did. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm grateful for her so much. Yeah. Um, then we got her stowaway. Her um, name is um, Losing Bloomer. <laughs> I forgot what you said. Hold on one second. <laughs> uh, Luzinda Bloomers. Losing the Bloomers. Oh uh, yeah. If you say it fast. Yeah. And she was a hoot. She just went crazy. She was mooning everybody. All oh, the Cali Express. Got um, a motley crew here. there. She's like showing the bloomers to everybody, you know? That was okay. fun. <laughs> and so um so we were able to pick up some crew along the way. So mm -hmm. um let me get my glasses. I'm sorry. Like I got some names I want to pronounce them right and I wanna yeah. see it. And I hate getting put on the spectacles. The Okay, so we got to pick up a surgeon. Her name is Malaya the Haunted. Oh, yeah. I think you might be familiar with her as well. She's she, with she, uh, she did with a, a knife. And so she's going to be taking care of, like, the crew health, make sure everybody's hydrated, make sure everybody's eating, for, uh, you know, take care of the crew, you know? Yeah. Because you get busy, you know, busy pirating, you forget to drink water sometimes, and you drink more rum than you need to. <laughs> I can guess for that. <laughs> um, and then we got um, 
a galley cook. Um, Chips Ahoy. Oh, Chips you know, Ahoy. Chips Ahoy. Um, you know, he just he's always there for me. Fun guy to talk to. I think the whole uh, thing is fun. Uh, I love I love all the characters and and everything that goes along with this. This is really neat. I love it. it really, everybody's got there is a performer. You know, it, it's nice. Yeah. Um, then I don't know if you've seen the picture or not, but I was able to take a picture of two beautiful ladies by my side. Okay. At Pirate Invasion, mm-hmm. there were um, Derby girls. What does that mean? Yeah, you know, roll, roller derby. Oh, roller derby. Roller derby. Yeah, got gotcha. yeah. yeah. So they really liked it. They wanted to join the crew, and so I invited them to be the captain's guard. Okay. We got um, Kill and Doom. Kill and Doom. Okay. That, that, that's like basically their um their roller derby their names. Derby names. Yeah. So we got Kill and Doom, and they're you know there to keep the captain in line yeah. talk about you know mm-hmm. socialize tell people about our um crack and barrel tavern you know mm-hmm. trying to get everybody to come out and check it out it sounds like uh, such a fun crew there friend and so we got some big hitters coming in too we got um ronald vega he goes by um, captain sebastian uh, he's been on the he's podcast nice guy. he's the one who actually introduced me to you right he's been on Which the podcast cool. yeah he was um like he's a great guy. He you yeah. know, does a lot of charity work. Uh, yeah. He gave me a sign called Rum Time, and he talked about he wants to do other things for the encampment. Um, yeah. Brought him on as carpenter because he's really good with his hands. Mm-hmm. And then, um, last but not least, this guy you know like was one of my idols. Getting into piracy, like seeing his outfits, seeing how gritty he was. Um, Stephen uh, Benuelos. Yeah, who's he's that? You know, he's got the big crossbone on his hat and oh um trying to, you'll you'll see him like yeah people you know, i've probably, really I've probably seen guy. him on I facebook he uh during um pirate invasion mm-hmm. um he's out uh, helping out you know members members of the order of the leviathan yeah he you know he's just such a great guy you know it's so much fun to be around him we um uh, we met at cronenberg a couple months back and then right after Cronenberg, we went, drove all the way down here to Long Beach to go to Shoreline Village just to pass out flower, the flyers for Pirate Invasion. So it was, you know, really got to bond with the guy, got to know him, and just really great guy. So okay. Really looking forward to working with this crew. So, and um, everything we got going on is me and the signing partner. Um, we want to throw some more pirate events. Like we got Pirate Invasion in Long Beach, and I love that to death. There's never going to be a replacement for that. But yeah. it's kind of like a, um, the stepping stone, you're like something else to hold us over. So we have to wait an entire year. And oh, something gotcha. Cooler, brother, you know, so it's going to start small. Um, we're going to try to try to nothing set in stone right now. Yeah. Um, do like a trading post where okay. we bring in encampments. Pirates can bring their old gear that they don't want and swap it out. Kind of like a pirate swap meet type of deal. But just, that would be a really cool event. I like that idea. And um, we're going to try to do it at El Dorado Park. And we're going to um, call it the Road to Eldo. Oh, yeah. And, um, or El, Road to El Dorado, basically. But we want to end up, you know, maybe growing it a little bit more, you know. Yeah, of course. Following, maybe we can expand it, you know, make it a, a, another destination. Yeah, do you think and, uh, you have, like, an idea of what month it'll be in? I, I, I wanted to do October. Yeah, I really do. There's a lot going but on in October, though. A lot going on in October. There's like Oktoberfest yeah. and Brent Favorites and birthdays. Right. And, ooh, it's going to be a crazy month. Um, And something else we've been toying around with is just like throwing a ball, like a pirate's ball. A pirate's up ball. Here in, yeah. In That'd be neat. You know, get, get, put on your best gear, come out. Yeah. Maybe we get a pirate band or two to play like traditional shanties and just right. hang out and have a great time, you know? Just be that's, pirate. A, that's a great idea. That you could that that sounds amazing. I know there's other ones, but you know, yeah, I want to do a pirate one. I mean, the other one I would really love to go to is the uh, the labyrinth ball. I don't know if you heard of that one. No, I never heard of that one. Okay, do you remember the movie in the eighties, Labyrinth with uh, David Bowie? Yeah, sure. Okay, so there's a whole ball based on that movie, like fantasy guard, and because you know there's a ball scene in there, so. People gonna dress as characters, uh, like creatures and wow. princesses, with big gowns, and like the gaudiest thing you ever seen, and you love it, you know. Where is that? 
located that, at? That's in LA, and I think it's um this month or next month. Oh wow! Like go on YouTube and just uh, look up um Labyrinth Ball. Labyrinth Ball. Okay, there. I'm definitely gonna go down a little rabbit hole with that. That sounds really neat. Yeah, doing and something like, like that for pirates would be amazing. Yeah, it would. So yeah. Uh, so, you know, so do ahead. you um? Is there like a way for other people to uh, check out? I mean, obviously you're on Facebook. People could find you, but do you have like an Instagram, uh, YouTube? What um, you got? Well, um, I'm working on an Instagram right now, unfortunately, but I got my personal Instagram. It's uh, at Eric Vaughn, V-O-N-H-U-N-T-E-R. Okay. All right. I'll put it and in the show I'm, notes for anybody who wants to check out uh, your stuff. And um, I'm planning on creating another um, Instagram for the Crack and Barrel. Crack and Barrel Tavern. Crack and Barrel Tavern. So is there a, a Facebook group for that? Because that might be yeah, an easy way to Facebook connect with you. Oh, the Crack and Barrel Tavern. There you go. If you find if you go into groups on Facebook, you can find that. And you know, yeah, I don't know. The, the audience of this podcast is very broad. I mean, there's definitely um pirates in the subculture that that listen to it and are interested in pirate. And then there's just people probably more like me that are just like, I, I don't know much about this world, but I'm kind of fascinated by it, as well as people who just like to hear the history um that I do every once in a while about pirates. But if you if you know, you're listening to this and, and you really are interested in connecting with people like Eric and um, the subculture. Facebook is how I connected with most of them. There are groups and crews that you could join and, and interact with and find out where they're going to be and what they're going to do. Um, yeah, I never was a big fan of Facebook and still I, until I went down the pirate path. And yeah, that's, that's right. That's what I, I, found... I do on there. Just yeah. connect with pirate friends, you know? It's it it's really gold for that because there it's all over the country and all over the world. To be honest, there's events and people that are interested in pirates. And obviously, I mean, if people are listening to this, they're pirate fans. They're fans of you. Yeah. They're fans of me. They're they're into this. So um, always trying to give them tips on where to find more content. I mean, you know, that would be my dream. Just not having to work and just go from fair to fair to fair. You know. <laughs> you got to figure out how to make that happen you know what you do a couple pirate balls you charge a good price for it and you, you know you just build that thing up just be an event yeah, yeah, you be yeah, an event guy like, i'm i'm come you know I'm, I'm come from home humble beginnings like i'm not i'm not a showy guy i'm not a flashy guy like i like yeah. trip. like i'm doing this just because i like having fun i just like being a pirate yeah like i if i'm popular if i'm not i don't care i just want to have fun and I want other people around me to have fun. I want to have those moments when it's just me and my crew and we're just hanging out and just yeah, making memory. Like you don't realize you're doing it at the moment, but you look back, you're like, damn, that was some good times, you know? Yeah. And I just want to do. All right. Well, you're an amazing guy. Is there anything else uh that you left out? I think that's about it. Are you good, my mate? I am good. All right. Well, this has been super fun to have you and I uh, appreciate you coming on, sharing your stories. And, Thanks for um, the invite, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, I will see you at the next pirate event, maybe the Viking okay. one for sure, Escondido, since for we'll sure, be Escondido. crewing the, uh, the Pirates of Cre Treasure Cove in Escondido, California in October and November. And they got, and they got a great, they got a great charity, you know. They got a great charity. They're all about literacy, which is how I got involved with the book writing um yeah fantastic every crew has their thing and uh when you uh figure out what yours is going to be you have to let us know you come back on the podcast and we'll talk oh, about definitely. it yeah hopefully i have a bigger crew over here so you can get talk to you know talk to more of us you know that's right i love that and uh for everybody else out there we appreciate you listening we want you to go out there and live the pirate life uh, you can, once again, email us at darkgravity at gmail.com and go to piratefanclub.com for all good pirate news and things. That's it. We're out. Peace.